Hi, I'm Panda. Welcome back to my playground. Today I'm going to tell the story about the time that I accidentally went viral. I was a single mom for most of my life. I had family that helped me out in the beginning. I actually lived with my parents for a very long time because I was working and going to school and I couldn't afford to live on my own. So they let me live at home and they helped take care of my son, which was fantastic. Uh, after my mom passed away, we ended up moving out about a year later and staying with friends. Um, actually, they were my, my partners. <laughs> uh, we'll talk more about Polly in another video, but they were my partners at the time. And we kind of co-parented for about a year uh, and things just didn't work out. And so because of that, I had to move out, um, which was really hard. And I wasn't working at the time, didn't have a lot of money. And so we stayed with some friends for a few months. And after that, that didn't work out so great. Um, fortunately, we're friends still. It just took a little bit of a time out. <laughs> and everything's good now. But I ended up finally in an apartment of my own taking care of my son and we've discussed that I am disabled and it's not always the easiest thing for me to drive, um, get around a lot. The, I, it was important that I put him in a school that had a school bus or that he could walk to school. Uh, and things worked out pretty well for a while, but he was really angry. He ended up being so angry after what happened with my exes. He ended up being very angry and I had to deal with a lot of behaviors. My son has um, adjustment disorder. And so change is not something he copes well with. And he had started doing YouTube videos. He did a lot of gaming at the time, Minecraft type stuff. And he had enough of enough followers that he could monetize his videos and he monetized his videos and he was quite proud of himself. Now he was not making very much money. Let's just put this into perspective. He was not making very much money, but that's okay. That wasn't the point. The point was he felt that, he was making money, he was going places, this was going to be his dream. And he started to get just a wee bit too big for his britches. Um, and so, you know, honestly, I don't really remember what triggered, triggered it, but he had been mouthing off, lipping at me, and I, was constantly asking him to do his chores. I couldn't get him to do his chores. I couldn't get him to help help out or anything. And we got into this huge fight, huge fight of me telling him what expectations were, what I needed from him. He was, he was a teenager at this point and he could start stepping up like, I don't know how long I had asked him to take out the trash and it had probably been days and everything. I was doing all of his, all of his chores. And during this fight, he threw in my face that he was mo making money now at the age of 12 or 13, making money. Now he didn't have to listen to his mom. He could basically do whatever he wanted. So I ended up writing a letter to him while he was at school. That letter basically outlined what the cost of living was, what rent was, what food was, what electricity was. I mean, I just, I laid it all out for him and I will end up posting a picture 
of what this letter looked like. Well, at the time, this was shortly after I had quit my job working at the school. And so I had a lot of teacher friends that were also parents and what have you. And so I decided to share this post with my friends from school and everything. And so that was like, you know, this is how I'm choosing to parent my kid. Well, I wanted to make it so that they could share it with the other teachers that I didn't I wasn't connected to on Facebook. And so I thought I had set it to they what is it? They have like friends with friends of friends or whatever. What I didn't realize was I had set it to public. And when you send it to public, everyone in the world can see this post. I don't know how. I don't know like where it ends up getting put up on Facebook or whatever that you any anyone can see it, but apparently a lot of people saw this letter. And what happened next was uh, I had just started dating my my wife now. And she and I were going to have a weekend by ourselves. And so I believe my son was probably staying with his uncles at that time. Probably his uncles. He was either with his uncles or he might have been with my exes. Even though they weren't his real parents, we still kind of co-parent him because he doesn't actually really know his father. But that's something... A totally different story for another day. But I ended up basically, for the most part, putting my phone aside for the entire weekend because I just wanted to spend it with my girlfriend at the time and enjoy our weekend together. Now, text messages, phone calls, I basically left up so I could be reached, but I just didn't want to deal with my Facebook. And it was a few hours before my girlfriend was take, gonna take me home. And I finally picked up my phone and I saw that I had like hundreds of comments and all sorts of things on my Facebook. I couldn't figure out what the hell had happened. And that's when I realized my mistake. The whole world had saw the Dear Aaron letter, as it is now known. The Dear Aaron letter. Um, out of respect for my son, I am not going to post pictures of, a, of him or anything. Uh, he did approve of me making this video, but he doesn't want his pictures up or anything like that. And the the letter was was met with pros and and some cons some people thought i was being extremely abusive to my kid um because in the letter i had pretty much taken away the all his favorite clothes that i bought him and left him just basic necessities and I uh, swapped out his bedding from his favorite bedding to like the kind of the backup bedding. Just, I did all these things that, because I had purchased them to make a point that he had to kind of earn them back by helping me. And otherwise, if he wanted to treat me like a roommate, he had to start paying his way as what was in the letter. And so people thought that was very cruel, very wrong. I was a terrible parent. Um, and truth of the matter is my son has turned out wonderful. <laughs> and he and I had a really long talk. He was initially very angry when he saw the letter, but we ended up having a really long productive talk about it after the fact. And that's what was important. And we, we discussed what expectations were and needs and yeah he started to earn back his stuff 
he basically just got grounded. But in the view of so many other people, it looked like I was taking away all of his necessities, which wasn't the case. I would never neglect my child. I never neglected my child. I love him dearly. He is my lifeblood. And so at any rate, it was mass chaos there for a little while because I, I ended up getting my Facebook taken down for a long time. I had used um, a name that wasn't my actual name. And the reason for that was my son's father was abusive and I didn't want him finding me on social media. And even though I kept most of everything private, I just wanted more protection. And so when Facebook shut down my profile, I was really upset because I needed that an anonymity at that time. I'm not so worried about it now. He's grown. He's living not totally on his own. He lives with roommates and he's paving his own way. So there's less that I'm afraid of. So then I had to put my Facebook was of absolutely no help. Um, they completely closed down. Like I said, they completely closed down my Facebook. And so I had to go in and if I wanted it back, I had to put my actual name on it. And then at that point I put my actual name on it and I took off all the photos of him, um, or at least privatized them. So I was the only person that could see him. And I, um, just basically stayed off the internet for a while. I did end up making a new, a new Facebook eventually. Um, and that's where my family is like strictly just family that's on that Facebook. But because of the viral, um, nature, the viral culture, uh, of how things work on, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and everything. Next thing I know, I have news outlets trying to contact me. Good Morning America wanted to fly out to the state that we lived in, and they wanted to film us and do a whole story on us. And I talked to my son about it. I didn't know exactly how I felt, especially considering I was trying to not draw attention to our existence to his father um but we talked about it and he was absolutely not okay with it just like he's still not okay with me sharing too much now and so so we didn't we didn't do a lot of talk shows a few people a few journalists wrote me i think usa today and i might end up linking that in the the comments um usa today ended up writing us and doing a little article. I just answered questions through email and that was it. Um, and there was like a few back follow up posts that I did to kind of explain myself and the nature of how I parent my child. Um, I'm a, I'm a big believer in natural consequences is one thing perfect example of natural consequences with him that we did was when he was really little, he went to preschool and we would, it would be a fight every single morning to get him out the door. He was, he does not like to get up. He's like me. We are not early risers. And it was a fight. We were always, always fighting. Hurry up, eat your breakfast. Come on, let's go, let's go. And we'd be rushing out the door. And they had recess first thing in the morning. That's when they had their recess was before they started preschool. And so I finally decided, you know what? I'm not going to fight with you anymore. I'm just going to let you take all the time in the world. And so I did. There was a morning that I just decided not to fight with him. I let him take all the time he wanted to eat his breakfast and fiddle around and get dressed. And when we got there, he had missed recess and he was so angry at me, so angry at me. And I told him, 
you know what? I'm sorry that you missed morning recess, but we talk about this every morning. You can't dawdle. You have to hustle and get ready. And I'm not going to fight you anymore. So, you know what? He never dawdled again after that. He was on time, he made mornings a lot easier, and he didn't re miss recess anymore. It's a natural consequence. I didn't have to take anything away from him, necessarily. I didn't have to yell, I didn't have to scream, I didn't have to ground him or anything like that. I just let him do what he was doing, and when he saw the result of it, he ended up realizing what he was going to miss out on and he changed the behavior. Very simple. And it's interesting because like just even here recently, a journalist messaged me and a freelance writer and just like absolutely berated me on, on what occurred back then. Um, and I was just because of a lot of the parents that do public shaming of their kids, breaking their laptops, cutting their hair on, t on YouTube, and just some really drastic things, things that I don't agree with. It's their parenting, it, what have you, but I didn't purposely make our story public. It happened, it went viral, and we dealt with the repercussions of it. But then a lot of these parents did. They ended up going on news and doing more after that. And I wasn't going to do that to him. Like I said, we talked about it. It was a joint thing. It's It was always him and me. Always him and me. And so I wasn't going to embarrass him. I wasn't going to embarrass him any more than he was already embarrassed even though like I said I didn't post pictures of him at the time and I believe that there is one article that has a very old picture of the two of us from from considering what his age was uh when this incident happened it was the only picture that I was okay sharing at that time yeah things worked out and after I ended up telling this freelance writer basically I'm like I am nothing like that that was not my intention and I explained how these news shows and everyone had been contacting me and like I said for the most part we didn't pursue it it my son was always and will always be more important to me so that is the story of how I accidentally went viral. Thanks for joining us, and I hope to see you again in the future. If you would like and subscribe, I would very much appreciate it. I am a Pandemonium on Instagram. My, uh, my Instagram, my Twitter, all of my fun stuff will be down in the description. So have a good one. I will see you soon. Thank you. Mwah.